Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to take you out onto the balcony garden and we are going to do a balcony garden harvest. So let's get straight into it. As always, time to feed the fish and as you can see I've not really been keeping up with the pond maintenance. It's pretty low so I definitely need to top that up at some point today. But other than that, the fish are doing super well and super healthy. Alright, so confession time. If you've been part of the live chat family, you know I've been working really, really hard on loads of different projects. And the reality is, is I've come out here today and my watering game has been so poor. I mean, half these guys... So bear with me two secs. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to water the garden, get it looking a little bit healthier and then I'm going to begin the harvest. As you can see my containers are really lifeless. The reality set in and how much work I had to do it was pretty overwhelming but I managed to complete it in small chunks and then came back the next day. I ended up doing a little bit of pruning, a bit more watering just to see if I could get the garden looking a little bit more vibrant again. I was hoping to come out today to see whether or not it's made any difference and I'm happy to say that the garden is looking a little bit more vibrant. So today I feel confident enough to take you around to actually do a harvest. I'll show you what the garden looks like now so you can see the improvements. Just one day later the containers are looking a hell of a lot better. They're a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more green. I found that breaking everything down into smaller chunks made it less overwhelming. It's still not perfect, but you know, it's better than it was. I filled out the pond and it's crystal clear. Took out some of the morning glories and the nasturtiums are looking gorgeous. Not only are we going to be harvesting the brassicas and my peppers and chilies, but we're also going to be doing some tidying up as we go. And as you can see from my tomato jungle, there's a lot to do. Today is harvest all of the red tomatoes and some of my golden tomatoes as well. These tomatoes are long overdue at harvest but their sheer size really is impressive. This one that's burst, I'm obviously gonna have to discard, but I'm not too bothered because there are plenty more still growing. Now these tomato bushes behind me are absolutely bursting with fruit. So what I'm going to do is just take them all off now, but I'm also gonna take some of the suckers off and I'm going to grow those indoors over winter. The more I moved everything, the more I realised just how much of a harvest I was going to have. Due to the wind on my garden, I can't stake my tomatoes too high because otherwise they snap and die in the wind. So I tend to let mine get bushy and grow horizontally. That was the first container, now I've got two more containers to go. But as I was working, I noticed that I had company. I tend to use a homemade aphid spray on my tomatoes, which seem to work well. However, I found these guys all over my tomatoes. They happen to be white flies. We're just over halfway of the tomato harvest and the bowl is already half full. As you can see, there are still green tomatoes left on these plants. Got one more to take care of, but this one's a little bit more tricky. Let's just say I had to put the camera down to harvest these. <laughs> Compared to yesterday, the brassicas are looking a lot healthier. I'm not going to harvest off any of the kale because I'm just not having any tonight. But let me show you what they look like today. As you can see, some of the plants are looking a little bit worse for wear. But if you look at this kale, you see it's actually regrowing its leaves directly from where I've harvested already. I've been continuously harvesting the leaves from this red cabbage. This second one bolted at the start of summer. Now I'm just using it for the seeds. So I'm going to harvest some of these pods and let them dry out. Then I'm going to replant them for next year. This broccoli plant has started to regrow from the base. At first I thought it was just new seedlings, but as you can see, they are completely new sprouts. So I think it'll be really interesting as an experiment to see what they do over winter and into next year. So I chopped off the top and we'll just see what happens. Interestingly, this cauliflower did exactly the same thing. It bolted and went to seed and now is making new growth as well. So I followed the same progress and throughout winter I'll be giving you updates to see what happens with my mutant brassicas. Brassicas are such heavy feeders but I give them all my pond water. Maybe that's why these guys are so vigorous. In this raised bed down here I've got some sweet corn it never really took off so I'm gonna take some of those out and then I've also got my Malabar spinach. Now my plan is to take one of the plants and I'm going to grow the 
plant inside. The others, I'm going to take some cuttings, propagate those, so I've got those ready for next year. And then the rest, I'm just going to leave to flower and collect the seeds. So, let me sort that out. <laughs> you can see just how underdeveloped the sweet corn is here. In fact, let me unwrap it and show you what it looks like inside. You can see the sweet corn at the bottom. In time, it would have grown up and looked more like a cob that we are used to seeing in the store. Next year, I'll start them a little bit earlier. <laughs> but in this pot, there just so happened to be some nasturtiums. Now, I've not planted them. They just appeared here. So I'm actually going to dig those up and I'm going to keep them and try and overwinter them as well. I'll be adding them to my winter salads. In my raised bed here, I've got all of my peppers that I grew from seed. You may remember in my Cut and Come Again video, I showed you how to germinate. Seed. These plants here are from that batch. Now, originally they were peppers, but they've turned into chilies. So it is what it is. I'm going to harvest those and put those into the harvest bowl. My chili peppers range from loads of different sizes to different colors, but they've all been attacked by aphids. So I'm going to harvest the chilies no matter what stage of growth they're in. I'll use some for cooking and then I'll use some for seeds for next year. At the moment, some of the chili bushes are in the same container as my sweet potatoes. So once I've overwintered the peppers, I'll then be able to do a full sweet potatoes harvest. I don't expect much in the sweet potato harvest because of the aphids, but it'll be really interesting to see what I have in there. This is probably my most successful chili plant. So I'm gonna harvest some of these, but they are huge. <laughs> wow. All I'm gonna do now is just harvest off the rest of the fruit. And I'm gonna do another video a bit later on showing you what to do with peppers and how to overwinter them. I've also got one or two strawberries here as well, so I'm going to harvest some of these and I've actually got quite a lot more coming through that just happen to be attacked by aphids. So I am going to spray this container down, um, but one of the things I did mention in one of my previous videos is that this is in the metal container, so if I leave this out here, I'm scared that the, that the strawberries will not make it through winter. But they are so productive in this container I don't want to remove them so what I'm probably going to do is after I've harvested I'm going to spray it down quarantine it and then once I'm pretty confident that there are no more aphids on it I'm gonna bring it inside and keep it on the indoor herb garden I just chopped off any fruit that was ready to harvest and also any of the yellowing leaves as well I really wasn't joking when I said that it was overrun with aphids, even in the middle of November. Aphids are literally my worst enemy up here. Now in these containers here, I had beans and I also had some sweet peas as well. They were growing up the arches, but they got attacked by spider mites and they didn't do too well in the wind. So I am going to admit defeat, pull these up and then I'm gonna have these containers ready to plant something else. And here I've got some mustard that I've been growing from seed. Beans are super good at putting nitrogen back into the soil, which is really, really good for green leafy leaves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my mustard that I've been growing into that same container. And that way my cycle starts again. Just look at how large some of these Malabar spinach leaves are. I'm gonna harvest off some of those and I just saute them and cook them in the same way that you do with normal spinach. So I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to add that to my harvest bowl. I've also taken some cuttings and I'll propagate those too for next year. Once I finished harvesting, I rearranged the garden. I left a couple of the tomato plants to overwinter and moved them away from the glass. Theoretically, this should help me overwinter the plants. But as you can see, they're still absolutely laden with fruit. So you guys, here is the final harvest bowl. So this is my final harvest of 2021 and look, just look at how big some of these Malabar spinach leaves are. <laughs> it's amazing. There we go. So here's the final bowl. I've got so much here to get through. Just goes to show what you can grow in your small spaces. 
Now I've got so many tomatoes here, I've got absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with them. So if you know and you've got some really good recipes, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make some. I might even make a cooking video for you. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've had a good time and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Bye.